HA 2019-04-6670, Brook Ridge Drive. Mr. Mark. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Like we talked about at the work session, this is one subject property, one applicant, but with three different requests. Um, for organization sake, we need to um, conduct three separate public hearings for them in a certain order. Um, if you will recall when we have an annexation request that we have to consider the rezoning of the property first and the annexation last. So this is a request first for a rezoning, and then a request for plan development approval, and then a request for annexation. Um, so the first one is the rezoning is to rezone 59.63 acres from residential R21 in the county to R10 in the city of Pejara. The property is located at 6670 Burfridge Drive. As you see on the map on the screen, this is immediately south of the Pejara city limits on the east side of um, Burfridge um, in what we call a suburban area of the feature development map. Um, on the northern part, you see the green line, that is the city limit uh, boundary. Um, the next slide, I think, is the zoning, or the one before that. You see the zoning pattern of the area. We see R6 zoning and Hayhower to the north. The bright blue is R21, which is half-acre lot residential zone in the county. There is a string of five parcels immediately west, which is R1. That's one-acre residential lot size in Lowndes County. And then to the southwest is R10 zoning, which is what the applicant's requesting. However, that property to the southwest, because it's not a municipal water and sewer system, those are generally half-acre lots. Um, the EA zoning is agricultural, just to give you an idea of the zoning patterns. Um, and all this is talked about in your staff report. But the land uses are a little bit different. Um, to the northwest, in the R6 that's west of South Hall Street, that is part of the city's um, sewer treatment facilities, namely the oxidation ponds. And then to the south of the subject property, that EA um, is a very large spray field also associated with the sewer treatment facility. So this is the subject property that's sort of wedged in between some lands that will never get um, developed, as well as an existing subdivision to the north, a busy railroad line to the east, and then still some open lands to the west. Um, aerial imagery, this is from, I think, 2018, but I know going back to 2007, uh, the land has been mostly cleared for a number of years now. Um, it is a, could call maybe a plantation cut at once upon a time, but I think even most of that has been harvested. Um, there's some pathways, as you see on the aerial, that cross through the property. Uh, but more importantly, in your packet is a copy of the survey. And these are recently delineated wetlands, wetlands boundaries. And we'll get more into that when we get to the plan development request. But for the moment, this is the rezoning issue, and it is to um, annex, and then, of course, rezone from R21 to R10. When you look at the overall zoning pattern on the zoning map, you sort of have a transition of higher density residential to the north, lower density residential to the south and west. R10 fits in the middle, um, as well as is consistent with R10 to the southwest. So R10 zoning, in terms of overall general density, seems to make the very good sense here. Um, so with that, staff is recommending approval of the R10 zoning change um, after finding it consistent with the comprehensive plan and the standards for exercise of zoning power. And details of that are there in your packet. I'd like to answer any questions you might have on the rezoning. I, I, I this, this is, I hate to say this, but don't, don't, yeah, I don't know if this is necessarily a rezoning question. I'm just curious about it. The, the, the R10 to the southwest corner, it, it, is that a community well? I am not certain. Um, I think it was at one point, or at least part of it. The county staff here might know something. the answer to that, or even engineer, but it's a little bit beyond the boundaries. I know it has been there more than 25 years. Um, it doesn't look like those lots were platted all at one time, at least based on the configuration of them. But looking at most of the lots, they're half acre, some are a little bit larger. Um, I, my guess is it's a community water system with individual septic tanks. And, 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 and now, like, like I said, this is not a reason I'm just curious about spray field of wells. I'm just curious how that got passed. I that's a lot well, anything, I mean, the spray field and all of that, that has to go through EPD review. Uh -huh. um, they it, look at it, land uses that are proximity, particularly density of development, and all of that has to be looked at, and it's monitored by the state. Which came first, subdivision or spray pill? I'm not sure. My guess is the subdivision. 
um, that's to the west, but of course none of that is on the subject property. Right? I, I just, I, like I said, it wasn't the only point, I'm just curious about it. I'm sorry, take it for that. If I had to guess, I'd say community water system with individual septic. Okay. Um, yes, that's yeah, typically yeah. what you find in the suburban rural area with half acre lots. If the, each lot has to have its own, usually you're looking at one acre lot sizes, which I imagine is the case with these R1 lots to the west. Um, but driving that, so the rest of you know, is there's a required spacing between a private well and a septic field. Um, soil types come into play as well, but the spacing is what generally dictates a one acre or a half acre lot size. You, if you have very long skinny lots, maybe, but you're not going to be able to do it too many times. Sooner or later. The math will catch up with yeah. you. All right, do we have any questions for staff? Debra's questions. Debra's questions that are pertinent to this case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if not, is there anyone not here tonight wishing to speak um, on behalf of the request? Please move to come forward if you're wishing to speak. Mr. Phelps. I'll show it until the end. Matt Phelps, 4560 Allen North Drive. Uh, I am here on behalf of applicants who is here tonight also. Uh, I don't have any particular questions about it. Uh, answer, but I'm here to answer stuff on engineering and rezoning type stuff. May I answer a question? That has nothing to do with this. I think those are probably the four EPD regulations in the system after everything I'm to. So that would be my guess. But that is a community water system, actually. Okay. In that area. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. First of all, somebody have any questions? No. I think the discussion will be happening in the next item of the plan development. So you're strength for that. I'll just hold for just a moment. We'll get back. Madam Chairman, as indicated by the proposed zoning of R10, the proposed use is a single pound. All right, is there anyone tonight wishing to speak, anyone else wishing to speak on behalf of the request? Please come forward. All right, if not, is there anyone tonight wishing to speak against the rezoning request? This is rezoning only. If you wish to speak against the rezoning, please come forward. State your name and address, please, sir. My name is Ruas Phillips, Jr. I live at 6597 Brook Ridge Drive. Uh, if I could get you to put the zoning map up, if you look on there, uh, R, let's see, R10, that first block, come inside. Yes, sir. That's where I live. Okay. Uh, I've never been in one of these meetings before, so. I'm against it because when you were talking about it being cleared, it, it, they just cut all the trees out of there last year. Uh, you've had trees that's been in woods and to the <coughs> east of R21, it's a swampy area in there. And when it rains a lot, you got water coming out of there, and it comes out in uh, in that road, Brook Ridge Drive. It comes out uh, in the south part of R21, probably 15 yards from that boundary, that south boundary. 15 or 20 yards, you got a place there that it just comes out of there like a river. And if you go on up Brook Ridge Drive, another 10 or 15 yards going north, it comes out of there again. Okay. Now, at the present time, when we get these six, seven, eight inch rains, the spray field you're talking about, the city's got a they got a road that goes in there right below that south border that goes into their spray field. It washes that road out so bad sometimes they can't get in the spray field. 
until they come in there and do something to it. The county has worked on it and worked on it. They tried to, maybe even went and run a sewage under the road, rerouting the water. At one time, where you see R10 running east and west, there's a ditch. It's on Mr. Cooper's property, that ditch is. But they had they had the uh, west ditch of Brook Ridge Drive. The west ditch was coming down and going. And I'm saying the ditch on Brook Ridge Drive, the road ditch. Okay, it runs parallel with the road. That's correct. Okay. They were bringing that water in. It was coming and going down parallel on my property in that ditch, which it joins this R21 on the west side, and there's a, there's a lake back there. If you follow Brook Ridge Drive around, it splits off and Hillcrest takes off. And that lake's on Hillcrest. That water was going in that lake. And the other ditch, where it was coming out of this property, the subject property, it was coming down and there's another ditch on the south side of my property, my neighbor joins that next block. And there was a ditch that, that he owns going down there. And it was taking that water into that same lake. Well, they rerouted it, trying to help it a couple years ago. They rerouted it, so they're not using that ditch. It's not, the ditch is not in use to one that's uh, Joining Mr. Cooper's on the bottom side of the R21 on the on the west side of Brook Ridge Drive. The point I'm making in all of this is that water's coming out of R21. That's a little land in there, and it's washing that road out real bad, and it's just barely been staying off of me. And when they go in there and clean all this land up, that water ain't going to have no grass and no woods to, to help hold it back. And it's going to be a it's going to be a serious problem if this passes and this goes through. If that's one of the major concerns is what they're going to do with this water. Okay. It don't it needs to be sanitized. Now I'm. I'm against it, uh, primarily for that reason. The next reason, uh, I know at some point in time they're going to annex this, uh, this subdivision down here, but I, I'm in the first house in that subdivision. And all that's going to be in city one day. I don't know when that'll be. I might be a question I could ask the city how they hire. Y'all might know that too. They'd know that before we would, I'm sure you. I don't think that's on the agenda right now, is it? No, it is not. Okay. All right, so we hear your concerns with flooding and um, excess water coming off your property. All right, now I've got a, I've got a neighbor, the one that lives right side of me, Mr. Jack Zebra. Uh, he's got a video. And he's here. I don't know if he wants to talk or not tonight. He, if he'd come up, he, he could show you how this water's coming out of there because he's, he's got beauty. He's lived there. I've been there since 94. He's lived there a lot longer than that. Would you like to come up and share that? <laughs> I mean, you, you pretty much said it all. Okay. Um, so, I'm, I hate to cut you off, but if we're going to let anybody else speak, you've got one minute. So okay, well, I'm you want to wrap it up? Proof. Okay. I just didn't know if he wanted to come up. <laughs> all right, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll we got the video, or he's got it. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, um, he did use up a lot of the time, but I am going to allow for another speaker. Is there someone else who wishes to speak again? So come forward. State your name and address. John Arnold, 